If you, want to, if you have a Bible, if you turn to Matthew chapter 11, that's where I'm going to be speaking from, just a few verses from Matthew chapter 11, uh, verses 28 to 30. It will also come up on the screen. It has come up on the screen behind me. Okay, so Matthew eleven twenty-eight to 30 says this. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. This is Jesus speaking these words. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let me take a quick straw poll here. Who here knows what it's like to feel weary and burdened? Just put your hand up if you know what it's like to ever feel weary and burdened. Yes, That's kind of the response I expected. And I reckon if I asked that question in any room, in any setting in the world, there would always be a 100% response. So when Jesus says here, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, I think we can safely say he means all. He's not just speaking to a select group of people back in um, 30 AD. He means all people, and I believe he means all people throughout history. So he's talking to us. This invitation applies to all of us. So for those of you here this morning who maybe you're not a Christian, you're, you're not a follower of Jesus, maybe you're here trying to figure all this stuff out, or maybe you're not, maybe you're just here. You're supporting somebody getting baptized, or you, you, you're here by, by another means. There's a really good challenge in here for you. There's an invitation here from Jesus that is extended to you. But also for those of us who are Christians, these words of Jesus should challenge us. These words of Jesus should affect us because, to be honest, I do sometimes find that I am weary and burdened. And so when I read these words of Jesus, it's like he's speaking directly to me and saying, well, look, if you're weary and burdened, you haven't really understood the greatness, the magnitude of what I offer you, the greatness of what I have done for you. So in this short passage, there's an invitation, there is a challenge for all of us. Now, what is this thing that Jesus is saying about a yoke? Because if you think about it, it's a pretty strange thing to say. Take my, put my yoke upon your neck so that you can finally get some rest. For those who don't know what a yoke is, here, there's a picture of a yoke. Um, as you can see, first century yokes, there's nothing particularly pleasant about them. There's nothing particularly nice about them. It's essentially a heavy wooden beam that's placed across the necks of animals, probably a couple of oxen, um, and, it, and it joins them together by the farmer so that, so that they can pull a cart or they can pull a plow. Now, apart from it not being a particularly pleasant item in itself, not very comfortable, in the Old Testament, the yoke is used as a symbol of slavery and oppression. In fact, according to the Old Testament prophets, the Messiah was going to come to break the yoke of oppression. So what is Jesus talking about here? Well, the clear implication of what Jesus is saying is that you are already wearing a yoke. Everybody is already wearing a yoke. You are already yoked to something, because the burden of the yoke isn't just come from the weight of the yoke itself. It's that you are yoked to something else. You are joined to something else. And Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. All you who are weary and burdened, take off the yoke you're wearing at the moment and take my yoke upon you instead, because my yoke is easy and light. The yoke you're wearing will crush you. It will destroy you. So I guess the question really is, what is it that you are yoked to? If everybody is yoked to something, joined to something, what is it that you are yoked to? What is the thing, if you really boil it down and it really comes down to it, what is the thing that you really live for? Where is it that you get your meaning in life or try to find your sense of meaning in life? Because that will be the thing that you are yoked to. And when you are yoked to something, you can't get away from it. You can't escape it. You are enslaved to it. Now, there are lots of things that we can get yoked to. There are lots of places, I'm sure you can think of many, that we try to find meaning in life through relationships, through our spouse, through our family, our children, through uh, our careers, through success, through popular approval, all sorts of things and many others beside. But I think you could put all of those things under one overarching banner, which is that we all have, I believe, a driving need to prove ourselves. We all want to prove ourselves. Because I, we all have, human beings, I believe we all have the same basic, deep needs. We all have a need to feel secure. And I think we all have a need to feel significant. And we all have a need to feel accepted and acceptable. 
And the, the net consequence of all those deep needs is that we spend most of our lives trying to prove ourselves. Because in many, many different ways. Because when we do, when we manage to prove ourselves in some way, well, we do feel more secure. We feel significant. We feel more accepted and more acceptable. So, for example, if the thing that you really live for, if, the, if, if you really get your sense of meaning in life from getting success in your career, I think that's probably quite a common one for many of us, getting success in your career, I would suggest what it really boils down to is trying to prove yourself. Because when you do, when success comes you feel secure. You feel significant. You feel acceptable to others. You can talk to others about, about your success. But of course, the flip side is very different. The flip side of that is all that striving, constant striving to try to prove yourself leads to weariness. It leads to burden as you work yourself into ground. That's where workaholics are, are coming from. And of course, when you fail, when success doesn't come, when somebody else gets promoted ahead of you, when when you get made redundant, well, that crushes you. It destroys you. If that's the thing that you are yoked to, if that's where you get your meaning in life, what are you yoked to? Maybe it's your family for, or your children. You know sometimes how you see people trying to live their lives through their children. And when the children are doing well, well, that's great because you feel more significant. You feel more secure about that. You feel, you feel acceptable to others. You can talk to people about how well my children are doing. Now, Boy, do you see this when the 11 plus comes around. I mean, it is madness. From, from the time your child is in year three, that's age seven, the buzz starts. People start talking to parents. Who, are you getting your child tutored? Who's tutoring your child? How often does that happen? Oh, my goodness, my child is seven. What is this about? And really, of course, you want the best for your child. I'm not denying that. Of course, you want the best for your child. But I suspect, and this is something that I have to guard against myself, I suspect that a large part of it for many people is how it reflects on you. Because I can talk about, if my child gets to grammar school, well, I can talk to people like that. That's great. The problem is, your expectations, if that's you, risk crushing your children. And of course, when they don't live up to your expectations, which they won't, that risks crushing you. What are you yoked to? What are you living for? Where do you find your meaning in life, your sense of security, significance, acceptance? We spend a lot of our lives trying to prove ourselves. And it's as if deep down, we know that we should be perfect. We know that we were meant, we were made to be perfect. But we're painfully aware that we don't live up to that. And so we strive. We strive to prove ourselves in many, many different ways. And it makes us weary. It brings restlessness. Lack of rest. It brings burden. And ultimately, whatever you are yoked to will destroy you. It will crush you. Being yoked to any, any means of trying to prove yourself outside of Jesus is like you being yoked together with a massive great cart horse. It's an animal you can't control. It is bigger than you. It is stronger than you. It, it, you can't keep up with it, and you will get weary. You will get burdened, and ultimately you'll get crushed. Uh, the Apostle Paul, he talks about a yoke in his letter to the Galatians. He talks about the yoke of slavery. The yoke of slavery. And he says, it is for freedom that Christ has set you free. It's from f- freedom, from all of that stuff. Freedom from having to do this, having to feel like this. Having, it's for freedom that Christ has set you free. So don't he says, don't let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Don't put on a yoke that you're not meant to to be putting on. So what is it that you are yoked to? What are you enslaved to? So what does Jesus offer instead? Well, the first thing that Jesus says here in this passage is, come to me. He says, come to me. He offers himself. Many people who are skeptical about Christianity, about the claims of Christianity, say they want proof. They want proof. And there may be some of you here today, I don't know, that maybe you're sitting there thinking, I'd, you know, I'd quite like to be able to believe this. I'd quite like to be able to believe in God, but I need a watertight argument here. I need proof for that to be able to happen. Well, the thing is, God hasn't sent a set of propositions. He hasn't sent a set of arguments God has sent a person, Jesus, God himself. 
And this person, Jesus, he says, come to me. Come to me. Come and see the person of God. Because you see, he is the watertight argument. Jesus is the proof of God. And he invites you to come to him. And I tell you, if you do, if you look at him properly, if you look closely, if you take the time to, to study him, to come to him, to really come to him and look at what he said and look at what he did, you will find that there are things that you find in here that are inexplicable other than God, that cannot be explained apart from God. If you take the time to look at this stuff properly and, and read here, read, read other books about you will find that this is not myth and fairy tale. You will find actually that the Christian faith is entirely reasonable, that the Christian faith is based on historical evidence, it's based on historical fact. And I haven't got the time to talk about any of that, but I would, if, you, if that's you, if you're in that position, I would really recommend this book to you called If God Then What by Andrew Wilson. If God Then What. Because he makes a really good case, and it's really well written, really easy to read, about just how reasonable the Christian faith is. And he explains a lot better in here than I can now. So I'd recommend that to you if you have those kinds of questions. But not only is the Christian faith reasonable, not only is it based on reason, but the Christian faith is transforming. And that's the key. It is transforming. When you come to Jesus, when you come and look at him properly, I am confident that you will find that he is the proof of God. Why am I confident? Because I believe in the gospel. I trust Jesus. I trust the gospel and that it is powerful. You will see that he is the proof of God and he will change your life. So I have a challenge for you. If you're not a Christian, if you're here today, you're not a Christian, I have a challenge for you. I have a lot of these on the tables at the back by the two main doors. This is the Gospel of Mark. Little book, the Gospel of Mark. It's all about Jesus. I... I have a challenge for you to take one of these. If you're not a Christian, if you are a Christian, please don't. We haven't got enough of that. But if you're not a Christian, please take one of these. Um, by, with no, it's completely free, no strings attached. No one's going to be looking to see who's taken them and then going to question you. No, no, no. Completely free of any strings and any cost. On the tables at that, please take one as you leave today. I'm giving you that for free. And I challenge you to read it and read it and read it again and again. And to come and look at Jesus. To come and look at him properly. And you will discover what these words here mean. You will discover, I am confident, you'll find the rest that Jesus offers. So if you're not a Christian, please take one and read it. Okay. Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. Yoke yourself to him. Now that's what these guys getting baptized this morning, they're they're doing exactly that. They're yoking themselves to Jesus. They're aligning themselves with him. Why do we yoke ourselves to Jesus? Because in him, it says here, you will find rest. Why will you find rest? Because when you are in Christ, you no longer have to prove yourself. You don't have to prove yourself anymore. It is for freedom that Christ has set you free. Because you find that all your deepest needs for security, significance, and acceptance are actually fully met in Jesus Christ. He has proved himself on your behalf, so you don't have to prove yourself anymore. Christians, are you yoking yourself to something else? Are you yoking yourself to something other than Jesus? Are you trying to meet your needs in something other than Jesus? Are you trying to prove yourself? Because if you're not yoked to Jesus, you are yoked to something else. Your Everybody is yoked to something. Take his yoke upon you, because it's the only yoke that is light Every other yoke will drive you into the ground. So harness yourself. Get in harness with Jesus. Finally, final thing I'll say here. What we've got to point out here is that this is not the promise of an easy life. We love verse 28. It says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, I will give you rest. Well, that, yeah, that sounds really lovely. But Jesus carries on talking. And we've got to remember, he is still talking about a yoke. And actually, the rest that Jesus is talking about really only comes by keeping in step with Jesus. When you have two oxen or two horses and they're yoked together, it's no good one trying to stand still while the other one moves. It's no good one trying to go in this direction while the other one tries to go in that direction. That will make it very, very hard work indeed. It will get very tiring. We have to keep in step with Jesus, walking at God's pace and in God's direction. 
That means constantly looking across to the one you're yoked to and learning from him. As it says in this passage, learning from him, looking to him, allowing him to guide you and direct you, listening to him, letting him teach you. It's only when you are in step with Jesus, and that might take you to places that you don't really want to go, actually. This is not about an easy life. Keeping in step with Jesus is not always the easy thing to do. But it is the only way that you will find that rest for your souls. It's the only way that you will discover what he means here by his yoke being easy and his burden being light. This is not about an easy life. It's about keeping in step with Jesus to find that rest for your souls. So for those getting baptized, brilliant. What brilliant testimonies and well done. What a fantastic and important step you're taking today, yoking yourselves with Jesus. And I'll tell you what, God is so pleased. And we are so pleased. We celebrate this with you. We, we just love to see people getting baptized because you're harnessing yourself with Jesus. You, you know, you are, you are you're yoking yourself to him. But of course, it's about a lot more than just today. It's about lifelong discipleship. It's about being a lifelong learner. It's about being a lifelong follower of Jesus, keeping in step with him. And that takes effort and it takes sacrifice. But it is the only way you'll find true rest. Don't be a consumer. Don't, don't just come on a Sunday for a little bit of time alongside Jesus and then the rest of the week that yoke comes off or that yoke becomes a burden because actually you're trying to pull in a different direction and it becomes hard work. Now keep in step with him. Walk at his pace in the direction he wants you to go. And if you're not a Christian, the invitation is there. The invitation is here for you. Come to me is what Jesus says to you. He says, come to me, read about me, look closely at me, and you will see and you will find God. When you look at Jesus, you will find that he died for you. He, he gave everything to lift that burden off your shoulders. You don't have to prove yourself anymore. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls.